So it was about five months ago when we benchmarked AMD's Radeon 7, a $700 GPU which aimed to compete against Nvidia's RTX 2080. The conclusion back then was, well, for gaming, the Radeon 7 was about 5-10% to 10 slower around most titles on average. In some cases it would tie with the RTX 2080, but the 2080 was the safer choice. I concluded my review back then basically saying that if you did want to buy a Radeon 7, it should not be solely for gaming performance, in that case you should buy the RTX 2080 instead, but it should also be for its OpenCL compute performance, for example in applications like Blender, where if you are rendering with the GPU instead of the CPU, you can actually get some really good performance out of the Radeon 7. And with AMD set to release their Navi GPUs in about two weeks time, I thought we'd revisit the Radeon 7, see how far it's come in the last five months with the latest vBIOS and of course the latest GPU drivers. So let's take a look at Radeon 7 five months later. If nothing else, I want this video to also serve as a bit of guidance on how seriously we should take these issues and works on launch day, for example, things like fan speed and temperature, and if software integration isn't perfect, uh, if five months later, for example, these things are not fixed, then maybe these issues should be brought up in the launch day performance reviews and be totally justified. If however, those issues are fixed, then that can also give us a bit of context on how serious these issues actually are. So the latest vBIOS that I've got here for Radeon 7 is V106, and the latest adrenaline driver that I've got here is 19.6.2. All right, now let's start off with what I think was probably the biggest issue at launch for the Radeon 7, which was the fan speed. Under significant load, you'd see the fan speed ramp up all the way to 3000 RPM because it was based off the hotspot GPU temperature, which was around 95 degrees C. If you do buy a Radeon 7 today, that is still going to be the case. The GPU will still ramp up to 3000 RPM in some instances. It really does depend on your ambient temperature. If your ambient temperature is around 20 degrees C, which it is here, that's pretty much what you should expect. GPU thermals also haven't changed pretty much significantly at all. I'm still seeing the GPU hit around 63 degrees C under load with the junction temperature sitting at around 93 to 95. So without dragging on too long, the bottom line here is that if you are buying a Radeon 7 or if you do have one uh, in your system at the moment, manual tuning is still required if you wanna run the card cool and quiet. Now, before we talk about manually tuning the card, there are two settings in AMD's Radeon Wattman, which is the overclocking or performance monitor software, which I really wanted to try out because at launch they just didn't work. This is the auto undervolt button and the auto overclock button. They are pretty self-explanatory. The auto undervolt button aims to reduce the operating voltage of the GPU without affecting the clock speed and the auto overclock button will automatically overclock your GPU. But unfortunately, these two buttons are still kind of broken. So I found that clicking auto undervolt uh, didn't actually undervolt the card at all. It basically just shut down uh, a black screen and then the entire system had to be restarted. And that is a bit of a disappointment because undervolting the Radeon 7 is where you, know, you can get it to operate pretty quiet and make it pretty usable. So, I mean, it would be really nice to have that auto undervolt actually working in the Wattman software. And in terms of auto overclock, I mean, it does technically overclock the card, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it. The fan speed ramps all the way up to 3,800 RPM, which is absolutely deafening. The clock speed does increase from around 1800 all the way up to uh, almost 2000. So I believe I saw it at around 1980 megahertz, but for the trade-off in that increased fan speed, that's just definitely not worth it. If you were water cooling the Radeon 7 with custom loop or some sort of hybrid solution, these sort of usability concerns pretty much go out the window. And in fact, that auto overclock feature or button would actually work and increase the performance of your card and you wouldn't of course have that fan speed issue. So the usability issues are still there which is pretty surprising honestly. Like I said at launch I did feel like most of these things would be expected to have been resolved by now and that's something that I'll definitely keep note of in future reviews. Having said that undervolting is not uh, very hard to do. All you need to do is go into Radeon Wattman, find the little data point that marks 
the GPU clock speed and voltage and basically just drag that down to as far as it's stable. In most cases, you'll see that data point uh, at as low as 980 millivolts. All right, now let's get to the gaming benchmarks to see if there has been any performance improvements over the last five months. And the bottom line here is that there hasn't been. And honestly, that's fine because we don't really expect huge performance increases for any GPU over time. You might have a couple games here or there which are optimized a little bit further and you might get a nice little FPS boost, but over the long term, on average, you shouldn't really see any deviation in terms of performance. And that's basically what we're seeing here. There might be a one FPS swing in either direction, but all in all, the Radeon 7 performs basically how it did at launch. That means that for gaming, the RTX 2080 is still the superior choice, seeing as both can still be had for around 700 US dollars. Now, just as I said at launch, the Radeon 7 is by no means slow. It's still a very capable card at 1440p and 4K. So if you are primarily buying this GPU for its OpenCL compute performance, or you're leveraging it some other way for its computational uh, power, then you are also getting a really good gaming GPU. The bottom line though, is that if you are buying a gaming GPU, the RTX 2080 is the superior choice over the Radeon 7. So thermals are the same, fan speeds are pretty much the same, um, and the conclusion for gaming performance is pretty much the same. Nothing has really changed for the Radeon 7, and that's okay because it gives us a bit of context moving forward with the upcoming GPUs from AMD. So again, if you're buying the Radeon 7, it better be for OpenCL compute performance, or maybe you're just a big fan of AMD. You can do whatever you want with your money. I'm just here to tell you that the RTX 2080 is the superior choice for gaming performance. Now there is one really interesting sort of use case for the Radeon 7 uh, that has sort of developed over the last few months. And that's if you were going to use this GPU for a Hackintosh PC. And so this is something that I'm actually planning to do over the next couple of weeks is actually build a Hackintosh system with a 9900K and a Radeon 7, because given Apple's current direction with their Mac Pro, AKA the cheese grater, I do feel like a lot of people who were hoping for a more affordable Mac Pro, hopefully like a $2,000 or $3,000 system, are probably going to build something themselves. So that's one interesting use case where the Radeon 7 really flourishes and is actually a really decent option as far as I have researched so far. So we'll see how that build pans out over the next couple of weeks. The other elephant in the room is of course the upcoming Navi GPUs. Um, in regards to if you wanna build a Hackintosh, I don't think they'll be supported anytime soon. But in terms of uh, a gaming GPU, which is what most of you actually care about, the Radeon 7 will still remain the flagship device from what we've seen so far. So the performance that we've seen so far has the $449 RX 5700 XT having similar performance to the RTX 2070. And we've seen the $379 RX 5700, which aims to outperform the RTX 2060 by about five to 10% on average. So until faster Navi GPUs are released, the Radeon 7 will remain the flagship GPU from AMD. And undercutting Radeon 7 wouldn't be a very good idea, it would affect the sales tremendously for this GPU, so we might not see high-end Navi GPUs for quite some time. So that's basically what you need to know about Radeon 7 five months from launch and with these new Navi GPUs on the way. Performance and thermals and the fan speed issues are still there and it still does require manual tuning if you want it to run quiet. It will be pretty interesting to see how the RX 5700 XT Navi GPU performs to the Radeon 7 because it is $250 less. We will be reviewing those Navi GPUs very soon come early July. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.